you can you can lead us uh, i think you know the format we do these days um on wednesdays is um at least we open up with prayer any opening remarks if levi was here and then um, we'll have the um the person who has presented from monday through tuesday which is our beloved brother ali uh, who stings like a bee and fly, floats like a butterfly he's going to summarize for us i think it says 10 minutes um and then after that we every one of us will have an opportunity depending on the number of persons um eight to ten minutes and we hope to go to no more than 9 45 today and then as you don't have to use up your 10 minutes or your eight minutes we're just going to have a wonderful conversation um based on i'm um, really trying to explore um, um god in god's fullness and our own identity so having said all that uh this exciting times we are living in as we pray for true parents the great work they're doing in korea i hand it over now to dr erin to lead us dr erin you know with parents i am so grateful have this opportunity with my request known at this particular time for everyone that is on this Zoom call. We're so grateful for this time that we're living in. We have breathed air, walked on the same soil that our true parents have walked on for their mother and mother. We're so grateful for the opportunity that we can see now, hear each other's voices, that we claim the word of God. We thank you now for everyone on this call. Bless us individually, then bless us collectively. I make this recording. Our name is a very blessed family. Adieu. Adieu. Amen. Adieu. Thank you, Doctor. It's all yours now, uh, Minister Ali. <laughs> Ali. Yeah. Now, now, uh, now, the 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 function, the, this technology is it the whoever it is that's speaking, it then speaks, but then everyone else mutes, so there's a clear channel. Or I'm hearing a little bit of static in the background. Uh, yeah, I hope it's not me. You can all. I think it was him. I think it was Father Bio. Um, okay. Well, oh, it's wonderful, wonderful now. That's I know because he, he muted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, greetings, family. Uh, one shout out to Dora. My daughter's out there, and I'll have to visit her, and then I'll have to visit you. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm here. Just I'm, I'm in Charlotte, but I'm just here here for a, a week. Okay. okay. I take care of my, my brothers dog and how oh good for you good for you um i don't know uh, how is it uh that you uh, that you sum up everything uh at the and at the same time feeling that you really haven't given the the subject matter uh real justice because it, it i mean you can spend a, a week or more and have a, a wonderful workshop you know uh, you know investing exploring uh you know, just just the depth and the breadth of 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 the meaning of life, and and that it's essentially a preparation for the next life, uh, as the, the evolution of of God's love and God's creative work works through each person's life individually, uh, as He works through us, you know, collectively in, in our in our family unit, uh, through our culture, and, and uh, really just to. Uh, with the simple goal of just arriving at uh, at the world where God and all of us can live together and just enjoy life the way it was meant to be enjoyed. I I, I, I was talking about that to my wife earlier today, and, and I was telling her, you know, sweetheart, uh, to think that all this beauty, this grandeur, it was a this spectacular afternoon, and to think that uh, without true people who can establish, reestablish, let's put it this way, uh, that original connection, then we would be God's hands, God's feet, 
God's senses to be able to smell, taste, hear, and see the glory of his creation. You know, as in the scripture, it says that the, the, the world, the created world, declares the glory of God. And so it shouts, it screams out, but all the while, the human race has been blind and deaf and dumb to that reality, you know. And so God has really been, how do you say, stifled. And so he's been throughout history uh, 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 deaf and mute and blinded in a sense, although he sees it all. But uh, he wants to, to, to complete the, his creative work through his sons and his daughters and the perfection of love on both dimensions. Uh, first of all, physically, here we have a physical life. That's God's gift that we need to take seriously. We need to value it in its preciousness that each person can do for God what no other person can do. Uh, the whole the, 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 the image of, of the shepherd going after that one that one lost sheep, leaving behind the secured uh, the rest of the flock, means that each person, uh, without each person, let me put it this way, then God's love could not be totally completed. And until, and we believe very firmly in the hope that, that even the depths of hell will be emptied out and all those wonderful people who were still created with, with, in the image and likeness of God, that even those people will be set free looking for that glorious day of liberation and reunion, where even the evil power and the evil, the walls will crumble. And even to imagine, even to imagine, to test our, our belief systems, that even the very original Lucifer could capitulate and bow down before the God who's never stopped loving him, who's never stopped believing in him since his, since his creation, a time immemorial ago, uh, uh, that he would be come to, to a complete voluntary surrender. This is the amazing hope of the divine principle and of this era. Praise God for the merit of the age to bring humanity into this mindset, to give us the ultimate hope that and to, to, I mean, it, it, I don't know. Maybe some of you can go back and remember that first taste of the principle, that first taste of of uh, that glimpse of of your inner person and the spirit who's always been there and just has just been crying out for freedom, for for understanding, for appreciation, and 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 we have to come to that point together, and. Uh, uh, th th this evening, uh, I have to say, it's kind of caught me by surprise because I didn't think I'd have to continue presenting. <laughs> I just thought we were just going to have a, you know, a, a, a deep from the heart. Uh, you you don't system. have to, as we said, you don't have to use up the 10 minutes. You just let the spirit lead. But, okay. Uh, yes, yes, don't, don't feel you are strapped and constrained now. Uh, not, okay. Oh, okay. You're not. But, uh, uh, okay. And by the way, you're doing just fine. I... I Please keep presenting. <laughs> okay. No, thank you. Thank you. Now, now, one thing caught me in in the in, in the volume of uh, uh, some of the excerpts of of, of Doctor Lee, and, and I, I just feel like I, I have a little more confidence. But here is because here is a man who's who's seeing through the lens of the principle the new world that he's now experiencing directly, and is just trying to convey it in order to help us out of his love for us. Most people have not had those visions, have had those skin touch uh, living experiences with the living God. Uh, so many people are about as spiritually sensitive as, as a doorknob. I'm serious. And we just go by feeling, emotion, impulse, and that's sad. And it's really tragic, but we're trying to get out of it. And so here, this gentleman ha has come forward to 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 devote himself to to revealing the the inner workings of the spirit and the spirit world, just so that we could be better equipped and better prepared. It's really about equipping ourselves in the here and now, because the problems are here and now. The problem of the fall 
and 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 the breakdown began on this earth and so it has to be resolved in the here and the now while we live and breathe in this physical world in order to construct something eternal the kingdom of heaven namely and we can take that with us that'll be our living experience we'll have lived in the culture have learned the language have developed the capacity to live in that kingdom and we experience that sweet wonderful freedom in the here and now we will take it with us and it will be god's gift to us he doesn't want to live alone and sit on a throne somewhere he wants to share he wants us to sit on his knee to laugh to play to be spontaneous that's his hope and so and so i i think of the i think of some of the imagery that that i i really couldn't put down a uh, uh, dr lee and and he's again again he's he's so fixated on love as he should be because love is the core love is everything love is the very reason why we're here the very reason why god created this amazing cosmos as as uh, reverend stoin was uh, was talking about how everything's interconnected you're looking at the galaxies and black holes and 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 you're just full of awe and wonder and it's really love love is that plasma that ties everything together and gives everything a common direction and purpose and so uh, reverend lee when he talks about love as it relates to to uh our, our physical experience, our earthly experience, he's, he describes that love, it, it, it exists in, in three facets or three expressions or forms. It's, it's conjugal, there's conjugal love, spiritual love, and religious agape love, which is the, which is the purest and the most unconditional. Mm -hmm. But I was caught up in this experience that he had, and uh, uh, here we are, we're blessed couples, we're married, We've experienced all those dimensions to, to a certain extent. And he talked about conjugal love. And I thought, well, that needs to be addressed too, because uh, human sexuality has been ensnared in the lie, the original lie of Satan. And it has been misused. It has become a tool of control. Of, uh, it's become a weapon. It's been weaponized. It's been it's been a, a, a tool to manipulate it, and it's it's become something that it's never was never meant to be. And so and so uh, he addresses conjugal love, which is really the sexual component of of of, of the, the breadth and the depth of, of the love of God that the God, the love that He meant for us to experience on this earth. And he describes it thusly. And, and he bears witness to, to, to anyway, let, let, let me just read it to you. And it's under conjugal love, so and it reads, conjugal love is the love where men and women are connected physically. On earth, we can feel emotion when our bodies can meet and love. But in heaven, a man and a woman without physical bodies can love. Someone's back. <laughs> okay. Uh, the conjugal love between those high spirits, those who are close to God, is like a beautiful picture. Since the bodies of the two become totally one when they love, they can feel a strong emotion through their bodies and minds, which goes beyond the feeling of love they felt on earth. It is like creating a higher existence from the state of a complete absence of ego. It is like feeling you are in a magical world. Also, you can actually view the scene of making love with your own eyes. Couples on earth make love in their bedrooms most of the time. Here in heaven, that is absolutely not the case. It is not a hidden love which you can only perform in your bedroom. In heaven, you might love among wild flowers in a field, on beautiful land, or on an ocean wave. You can even love in the mountains where the birds are singing, and the scene is so beautiful that those who watch you will become intoxicated. Rather than feeling shame or disgrace, which is really the fruit 
of the fall. As you felt on earth, you can observe the scene with a beautiful, peaceful mind, admiring that beauty. Does it fill you with, with disgust and like, uh, like cringe? No, it is beautiful. It's magical and it's intoxicating and it's free of shame and guilt. Hell, though, is just the opposite. People in hell make love hidden away. And those who see the conjugal scene curse them. They point their fingers at them saying they are ugly. This is obscene. Those love scenes in hell are very similar to those on earth. So we know pornography in this, in this world, but in the heavenly world, it is a source of great love. It is magical and it is wonderful and is blessed and sanctioned by God himself. There's nothing to be ashamed about. And so the, the focus of you. <laughs> has to be the liberation of our love, our sexuality, <laughs> our agape love, our spiritual love, and set it free to be enjoyed to the fullest. Mm. And my brothers and sisters, that's the goal, but it has to start now. And you, we couples, we have to get to work to overcome the barriers overcome and learn to forgive to communicate to listen and to just continue to love and reconcile with each yeah, other so and let, true. Love, let love run its course my beloved thank you with that i'm gonna stop talking <laughs> <laughs> thank you Ali. thank you but never stop loving okay <laughs> because as uh, you love us we love you i mean you really have taken us deep into the spirit realm as we welcome our great brother dr levi um thank you again for uh, it's not easy to recap uh there's no recapping here it's a continuous journey of exploration exploring god more and more there will never be a, a capping so i mean so it's so it's so beautiful um I can put some questions in, but let's open up because Sister Morgan says she has to leave. Uh, I'm just going to drop something so that Sister Morgan can run with it. Um, okay. I always wonder, you know, like like Lee says, love making in heaven is just open and it's just beautiful. It intoxicates people. Well, no doubt um, that same thing happens here on Earth um, when <laughs> when when people you know do it in the whichever way they do it um um you know um they do it you do it with your partner you watch another partner or whatever you still get intoxicated <laughs> it, it gets you but there's one point i want to make have any one of you been to a nudist colony no it's something very powerful you would be amazed how Father Bio, I just want to. I, wait, I know, I know. I, I, say that, sir. There's a little noise behind you. I know. I don't know what it is. I've tried to. Maybe it's my computer. But anyway, let me let Sister Morgan go ahead. Just something to drop in. How do you know? Because I went to a nudist colony, and I was amazed how people could be all naked and they don't lust and rape each other. And I was amazed when I went to, when I see the, 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 the naked aborigines, how they are naked, they live their life, and they don't, they don't have the same falling nature. Sister Morgan, I know you say you have to leave. Just something, just something to throw in here. <laughs> well, first of all, um, I'm just so glad to see, um, is that Sister Kelly? Yes, ma'am. It's me. Hi, Sister Kelly. Hello. How are you nice doing? Nice to see your face. Um, Same here. You know, Brother Will was talking about, um, you know, Dr. Lee and how Dr. Lee is experiencing the spirit world and sharing that with us. Um, you know, this is something that people are afraid of because it's the unknown the spiritual realm, but that is not something to be feared. And as we grow and develop, our spiritual senses are going to start opening up and if, and, and people have to be prepared and ready for that eventuality. And it's nothing to be afraid of. 
That's why we have to make sure that we live a, a, a certain way of life so that when those senses begin to open up, they open up into the purest form of spirit as opposed to the more evil forms of spirit. So I've actually uh, have had some experiences now of this actually happening. I've, saw, I've seen a spirit cross the, my house. Um, I felt this wave the other day of, of, of uh, spiritual understanding, enlightenment about a certain situation that was getting ready to happen. And somebody was getting ready to make a, a, a mistake and this sudden wave came and then, then this wisdom came. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is what spiritual energy is. This is what we're supposed to glean from God is this energy and this power. So I, I, it, it's, you know, I, I wanna help people to understand, don't be afraid. Because people, oh no, I don't want to be open. But you have no, it's, it, Adam and Eve were completely open in the very beginning. They saw God, they spoke to God. They, and I'm really anxious mm -hmm. to have that mm -hmm. experience, to see in the spirit, because it's going to be like, like Will said, it's going to be magical. It's going to be dynamic. But if we, if we get through the three stages of growth and get to a place where we're, we're, you know, we can have the best experience possible. So I thank you for your insight. I really appreciate it. Uh, I really apologize that I have to leave, but having just gotten here, I really need to take care of a couple of things and I'll be with you all on Monday, but thank you so very much for that teaching. I, it really helped to solidify my uh, experiences now. It helped me to realize, yes, this is how it's supposed to be. You know, this is how we're supposed to we're supposed to grow and to develop. So thank you very much. Namaste, sister. Thank you. Thank you. Is this better? Is yeah. this better? Thank you, Dr. Levi. Um, today's ladies, Perfect. as as great gentlemen, thank you to Brother Will for a very interesting topic again. Uh, Minister Kelly, what can yes, you sir? share? Please share with us. Follow up your sister, David Morgan. About the spirit world and all these <laughs> great God, things we just Where heard. Is to say Willie Ramos. Oh God. Well, the spirit world is as real as this physical world, and the spirit world controls the physical world. And she was saying, the spirit world is even more real than the physical world. And you know, she was talking about the spirits. I heard my husband in this house since he passed. My husband had a cough and I heard that cough. And I told myself, wasn't nobody in this house but me. And I went back to sleep. I was asleep when it happened. But I finally told him that I'm good. He could go on to get his rest because God got me. So I agree, spirits do come in your house or in your car, or even if you are at the grocery store or something, if God wants that spirit to come through you and show you he will, and it's for a reason. A lot of time it's for a reason where you can help somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Somebody may be in need or need your assistant or whatever, and God would allow the Holy Spirit to come and tell you. You know, if you may be in Walmart, I'm gonna use this for an example. You may be Walmart and the person in front of you may not have all the money to pay for their groceries or whatever they have. God will speak to you in the spirit and tell you to pay for it. Yes. Last week, my truck wouldn't crank. And so I had my pastor to come out. He's a mechanic to check it out. And he charged it up. He said, I think it's your battery. But if it don't crank tomorrow, you know it is your battery. The next day, it wouldn't crank again. So I called one of my friends. I said, I need to borrow some money. They said, for what? I said, my battery in my truck won't crank. He said, well, baby, I don't have no money right now. I said, well, son, brother, son, we call each other name. I said, thank you anyway. That man called me back within an hour and said, I'll be up there in a few minutes and we're going to get you a battery. Mm -hmm. And he, I mean, get you a battery. He told me, that God moved in his heart and he told his wife. He said, Sister Kelly up there is in trouble. She's in a bind and she need our sister. 
See, that's why I know the spirit speaks to people to help other folk. The spirit don't speak to people to hurt people. You know what I'm saying? It mm -hmm. speaks to you so you can help your brother and your sister because we all going to be down one of these days and the spirit going to speak to somebody to come and pick you up. And I just really love that. And I thanked him and I said, when I get, get my money, I'm going to pay you. But he said, no. He said, you don't owe us nothing. I mm -hmm. said, well, I'm going to take you out to dinner. You know, mm -hmm. something like that. But you know, the spirit do pick the, speak to you and it's for the good, the betterment. Because God know how you are in your heart. And a lot of time it be tests to test you to see if you really who you proclaim to be in Christ. Mm. So yeah, so we got those worlds. We got a spirit world, a physical world, and we also have a man world. <laughs> and this man world, oh my God, we all got to touch and agree and keep on playing. <laughs> pleading the blood of Christ on this situation in this man world and thank y'all for allowing me to talk <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank, you. thank you Minister Kelly thank you Mother Kelly again <laughs> God really. bless you huh we bless God for you we bless God for you let's move right on Dr. Erin it's on you now what's the spirit <laughs> world talking to you what's the uh -oh. spirit world telling you <laughs> Dr. Heron. So, so, Reverend Heron, so Reverend Heron you're you're not the moderator today <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> no I the bell again <laughs> yeah so is that on me so I, I father bio so father bio you the moderator for this group tonight yes just for tonight sir Go ahead, Dr. Heron, sir. <laughs> Certainly. I love to listen. I learn by listening. Mm -hmm. and, I have read, and I have read what my dear brother uh, Will was talking about the spirit world. You know, most of us know something about this physical realm. But we do get information about the spiritual realm. And people need mm -hmm. to be taught the lifestyle that is lived in the spiritual world. Mm. Uh, as I think he was saying, on earth is where we need to eliminate all the sins and ask forgiven of the sin that we have committed so when we enter into the spirit world we can live in freedom peace joy and happiness mm -hmm. be able to travel different places because we are not restricted in the spirit world if you don't have no sin <clears throat> sin to keep you down sin to keep you low sin yes. to Torment to seep you in misery. Uh, in mm. the Bible, it says, mm -hmm. To the fallen man, we are struggling to attain happiness. And most of our desires is not of God. So, therefore, we are still in misery because we're not obeying the principles. Of the heavenly laws. Mm -hmm. I, he was talking about making love in the spirit world. Mm -hmm. I wish everybody in the world could hear that teaching <clears throat> because it's beyond human understanding if you have not mm -hmm. been taught. <laughs> you know, on earth, <laughs> Dogs pay you no attention when they're making love. <laughs> they do it freely. But due to the fall of man, we go to hide behind closed doors. Call ourselves making love. But it's not making love. It's committing adultery, fornication, and all this mess. All right, Pop. I've never, never been to a nudist camp. I only saw some pictures of it. But, uh, you got to be strong, Brother Bayo. Ah, 
do not to let your mind get corrupted on what you see. Mm -hmm. The woman's body is not to be lust, lust at it, but it's to be admired. We should uh, admire a woman's body. I was reading something. It says, in the spirit world, what if you want to visit someone in the spirit world, and when you appear in the house, they are stark naked. What will you do? Just have a big laugh and put on a clothes and go on about why you visited them. <laughs> so there's so much that we need to know is not being taught by conventional teachers. And I'm so glad that True Parents, Father and Mother Moon have brought us all of this teaching. And I pray that from this group of people, we can spread this teaching, spread this good news, spread these miracles that one even received from receiving the, 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 the holy wine. Oh, it's a blessing. It's a blessing that beyond human understanding. Uh, when a person gets free of sin, they can be said, thank God. I done made it over. Old son said, I'm so glad. The Satan is mad. He done missed his soul that he thought his head. Thank you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. All right. Dr. Aaron, I could sit under your teaching all night. I'm serious. <laughs> you have a way. You know, you have a way with words and presenting it so beautiful. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Dr. Stuyan. Would you oblige us and add to this wonderful heavenly conversation about sex in the spirit world? <laughs> well, let me let me begin with a question. You know, the Bible says, <clears throat> "What is bound on earth is bound in heaven. What is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven." Can mm -hmm. we expect to have that freedom in spirit world unless we first demonstrate it here in this physical life? Mm. That's a question open to all of us because <clears throat> I know that there's the ideal is that for that to happen in the spirit world can only happen when we are able to achieve such a life in this world. In other words, it is a future hope and an aspiration, but I don't think it can be a uh, reality uh, for the moment because we have not been able to achieve it ourselves. So we need to achieve that in this life in order to secure it in the next life, which means that the love you make is the only love you take. So make sure it's heavenly. <laughs> I have to ring the bell for that. Make sure it's heavenly. <laughs> Write it down. I love that. <laughs> so the other point I wanted to make is um, if you have the eye to see the magic, it's because there's magic in you. If you have the eye to see the beauty, it's because there's beauty in you. If there's heaven in you, you see heaven all around you because you see on the outside what is on the inside. <clears throat> so when I look at my wife or if I should see a beautiful uh, woman, you know, my, my first thoughts are, Wow, God made this person so beautiful. Wow, look at the beauty of this. God, you are incredible. Thank you for making such. You know, I can immediately deflect that and give glory and honor to God. So I am, uh, I'm not in a position uh, to be tempted in any way. I can just be admiring um, what's taking place. Uh -huh. uh, you know, my wife and I were previously married, and we waited 12 years for the blessing. We were separated from each other for 12 years before we were blessed. And in the course of that time, uh, <clears throat> I said to my wife, I could walk into a harem full of girls and not be stimulated. That's the amount of control uh, that I was able to establish. And so now, if people are able to establish that level of control, then that reality becomes Possible. But you know, when I went to a Muslim mosque, 
I noticed that all the men sit in the front and all the women sit in the back. So I came and said, why is this so? He said, oh, so that the men would not be tempted by these women seeing them, they'll be distracted from the word of God. And I said, are you telling me that your men are so stupidly weak that they can't be focused on God just because they see the back head of a woman with wavy hair? You, you're telling me this is how stupidly weak your men are? You are, you are, you should be ashamed that you have such a put down on your men and no control. Uh, they didn't appreciate that, but they couldn't argue that. So, uh, um, sorry. <laughs> so before you, I- You go around, you go around picking fights. Sorry? I said, don't go around picking fights now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not the problem. The truth is the problem, okay? <laughs> Don't shoot the messenger, deal with the truth. <laughs> so uh, I want to tell you also, <clears throat> um, Father speaking on conjugal love. In many ways, you know, uh, making love makes a lot of, takes a lot of effort. <clears throat> uh, you burn a lot of oxygen. You burn, a, you burn a lot of energy. It takes a lot of energy uh, to reach a climax. And, you know, most people never thought, why is that the case? Why is it that is that takes so much energy? The father said, <clears throat> in a manner of speaking, making love is almost like welding, like bonding. The man and the woman will make love, they, the temperature rises and they bond. It's like they, they weld one another to one another. It's a welding process. And he said, you need to have three to 5,000 bonding experiences in this life so that it carries you over into the spirit world. So, you know, most people have not understood, uh, you know, especially in some of our Japanese sisters with whom I've had the pleasure of advising is uh, in uh, blessed marriage. Uh, you know, they had the idea that, um, you know, uh, it's somehow taboo. And I tried to explain, you know, when God said, do not look at the forbidden fruit, don't touch it, don't taste it, don't go near it, don't think about it, you know, it should be out. And I completely agree. Before you're blessed, don't go there. But it means the opposite on the other side. Once you're blessed, every day you should look, every day you should touch, every day you should taste. What do you mean, brothers? Make sense? You see, we have not understood the principle to apply it in such a way. So in many of our um, unification marriages, we've had a lot of these issues that emerged, uh, which simply weren't resolved by the misunderstanding that people have had. They couldn't get over the angst of the past. And I remember one of our brothers telling me this little story, which I believe was a joke, but um, anyway, he conveyed it so, seriously that I thought, hmm, maybe, you know, so I'll pass it to you. He said he was at a workshop and he asked, um, you know, uh, God said that um, you are to be blessed so that you can enter the holy of holy places. And so he says, how many of you enter the holy place once a day? And some people put their hand up and he said, well, how many of you enter the holy place once a week? And so Somebody put their hands up. And, How many of you enter the holy of holy places once a month? People put their hands up. And finally said, How many of you enter the holy place, holy of holy places once a year? And one guy in the back is like, Me, 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 so excited. <laughs> and he says, Well, you enter the holy of holy places only once a year? Why are you so excited? He says, Tonight's the night. <laughs> Don't talk to me tomorrow. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you see, once you put the perspective and the spin on it, it all makes sense, you know. <laughs> and I'll close with this. I was at Belvedere where Father spoke about intimacy. And uh, I was there with my son's wife, uh, Christina Sapp, 
I think most of you might know Richard Sapp, who's you know a, a pillar in our faith community. Anyway, his daughter became uh, uh, my son's wife, uh, and uh, such a beautiful, beautiful girl. Anyway, we were sitting there in the audience, and Father is sharing all these insights and intimacy, and I could see she felt uncomfortable. She didn't know how I would react, and so I just try to make her feel comfortable and we were making jokes and you know making light of it and just making her feel at ease and comfortable because it seemed like you know she was like what would my dad say what my my father-in-law say like she didn't know how to react so I had to adjust to that situation and I remember uh we joking about some of the things the father said one was he said um you know I told the sisters that they should go and get a pubic hair from their husbands and put that hair in their purse. And when they walk by and see a handsome man, they should quickly open their purse. I'm a married woman. <laughs> <laughs> and I should not go. This is my beloved, you know. And he said, one Japanese sister didn't understand that advice very well. She went home. And she said, father said, I need a pubic hair to be, <laughs> to be chased. And so she went in, dug both her hands in and plucked out as many as she could. He said, that's not what I mean. It's symbolic, it's symbolic. Don't go crazy. <laughs> really good yes, laugh. Man, I mean, people can take things to an extreme. And then he said, you know, I don't understand how it is that people could be talking divorce after blessed marriage. You know, he said, you need to compete with all creation. You are the lords of creation. Did you know that snakes make love for two, three days nonstop? Do you want to be outdone by a snake? Come on now. <laughs> You've got to set your aims high. So make it a date in your marriage that you can make two, three days, set them aside so that you can make love nonstop. So that you can oh you can outperform the snakes. And he said, Where the love birds the birds make love where? They make love in the trees. So find the tree, make a date. <laughs> I'll do the birds. <laughs> Fish make love underwater. Hey, what are you waiting for? <laughs> make a date of it. <laughs> so he spoke in these ways, saying, We really need to, as lords of creation. Uh, observe how love is made in creation. It's there for our edification. We learn about love from the birds and the bees. We learn about love from nature. And animals have no shame, no, um, no feeling of uh, anxiety. Uh, it's all perfectly natural. Everything is. And so we need to learn from the school of love which God gave us every day for every age for eternity that we can look at creation and continue to be inspired and see the beauty, the charm, the glow, and the magic uh, that God set before us and inside us. Okay, there's more, but I'll stop here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Don't stop, don't stop now, Dr. Suya. <laughs> uh, I think we, 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 we've stumbled into something that I, I know will oh, attract, oh, oh. attract the public's attention um, when we speak on this wonderful matter. Thank you, Dr. Will, for really um, bringing this to life. Again, Dr. Erin, thank you. I'm going to just share a little and then we'll have Dr. Our great brother. And Levi share, and then we'll have we'll come back. And again, we can go to 9:45. It's about 9, 9:20 now. Um, <clears throat> one of the things Will you shared today that I thought was quite profound was about the unique truth bodies. How we are all, we all have this unique fingerprint, um, this unique way of stimulating God, that without I, without you, without that person's unique um, gift, 
God is really not complete. You know, it is it is like the our solar system without Pluto. It's not complete. Now they've denigrated Pluto. It's no more. Still, yeah, it's no more a planet or something. But it's still there. Um, and I I I think I don't think that that's very um, um, quite a profound, beautiful way of helping everyone when the divine prince, when father coins that word unique truth body. Mm. And we look at one another, we have all unique fingerprints. It, um, it's interesting how in the tree, actually we have, um, in the trillions of human beings, I can see they're in the trillions because nobody really knows how long we've lived on this earth. Uh, but there's no two, no, no same individual that is, even twins, they still have their own unique print. And I thought that was so beautiful that God is waiting for everyone. So this idea of uniformity um, doesn't really exist. It only exists at the core. Um, we are uniform based on um, we come from God. But diversity is the order of the day when you see the universe. Also, this beautiful idea of, um, you know, um, we talk about the spirit world. Last time, um, according to the way the spirit is moving me right now, um, it tells me not to worry about the spirit world, but no doubt to, to, to empower my sixth sense, my spiritual senses, which is all part of um, what religion should be about, to relink us. Because what was really severed um, in the fall was that deeper connection, that ability to communicate with God that is already kind of within us because our temple, um, the, you know, the, the Bible says your body is the temple of God. So because once the spirit, once you stop, um, 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 you know, once you're dead, the spirit goes back to God. So that opening our sixth sense is important. Um, it's part of what religion should lead us to, how we can be able, I could communicate with you without picking up the telephone, um, which we do. Um, when persons are really attached to one another, really in love with each other, not only the conjugal love, you know, a child and a mother, a parent has a premonition. Something has happened to my daughter from a distance and acts on it. So we need to open, no doubt, our sixth sense beyond, um, you know, the, the ninth power. Um, and and this, is, this is one of the things I look at the blessing as doing for us is it helps us to activate um, that part of us that is not complete. Hence, a man needs to marry a woman. A woman needs to marry a man in order to come to the fullness of activating their relationship with God. Uh, without that, even though I have a good relationship with God as an individual, the fullness of, 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 of my senses, it, 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 it's, you know, um, it, it's, it's not there until I am in a union relationship, harmonious relationship with a complementary opposite, a partner that, that now we start working not just physically, um, but, but mentally spiritually belief everything our act is is like before i finish my sentence my wife knows what i'm saying you know <laughs> you know that type of that type of um spiritual union um uh, on earth um that type of sex let's let's get that kind type of conjugal um beauty where you and your partner really are complete with god you know it's because of god um, not just because you, you know, you have physical um, staying power, Viagra power, not because of Viagra power, but because of, you know, a deeper power. And it's, it's interesting how almost all religions have, um, have looked at sex in a very bad way or, you know, um, degrading way. Oh, it's nasty and it is, it is so sad. That's one of the deceits. Of, of, of Satan using religion again, infiltrating religion and um, turn, you know, um, turning religion into, into you know, this type of um, dreadful 
things. And one day, I think, I was, where was it in Belgium? Yeah, where was I? Um, like you, Dr. Stuyan, and many of you, we go to Hunduke in the early days of, of our formation. Um, Father spoke about, you know, um, the original blessing. Before you get blessed, you should have sex in front of your parents, your in-laws, <laughs> you know, because in heaven, you know, God should be present in your, in your, in your, what are you ashamed of? I mean, and that day I was like, wait a minute, I have this new, new, what was I a Methodist minister then? What was I, you know, some Christian church I was in. I'm like, what? This is so raw. <laughs> but then the more you really, <laughs> Dr. Harry, you're laughing, the more you sit down with this, it's like, hey, this is, this is what's happening all around us. Sex is, is, is happening everywhere right now. Not just with human beings, everything is, is, is having an intercourse. Everything is in relationship. Everything, everything. And so it's just beautiful um, that we are coming out of um, that, that um, a naked and ashamed age, you know, you know, um, but at the same time, we are not supposed to just start having sex anywhere because somehow we are enlightened, you know, we still, um, it's still a sacred act. It's an act, yes, the animals don't understand its sanctity and its sacredness because it is an act of worship, actually. Um, it is an act of seeking to really unite with the God in the other. Um, and so it's a sad thing when the Muslims, you know, just this other spin about the afterlife or the life after life, spirit realm. The Muslim religion talks about, you know, um, their men are eager to die quickly because there are 72 virgins, um, Sister Kelly, waiting for them, <laughs> waiting for them <laughs> in the afterlife. So they are ready. That's why they can blow themselves up because they're going to go enjoy. It's like, what the heck is this type of jargon? And, and people fall for it. So uh, as they put the women in the back, you know, the Jews also separate the women. They put the women in another part of the synagogue. And then we in the Christian community, we tell our, our women, cover your hair because you, know, you might entice, that's what that scripture is saying. You might entice the man when he's worshiping, really. So I stand with my beloved brother. How strong are you? you are you a man of God? Uh, okay. Oh, you're waiting for 72 virgins. Okay. So you're ready to go kill other people to get them. Oh, you, you can't stand a woman with her hair beautiful. You can't say, wow, that's a beautiful woman. I'm not lost for her. You can't do that. Come on now. And you're a Christian, you're a leader. Uh, but again, we live in an immature world. We caution one another. Um, we are not there yet, but prayerful. So thank you again, brothers, for allowing me to share. As we hand over to Dr. Levi Doughty to share with us. Dr. Erin, again, thank you for allowing me to facilitate. Dr. Levi, could you please unmute yourself, sir, and share before, with us. Before you, I want to tell a quick joke here before you start, uh, Brother Levi. <laughs> um, you, you'll enjoy this. Apparently, one such terrorist who was waiting for 72 virgins uh, was in the room, in a padded room, waiting for his reward. And he sees his brother walking on crutches, passing by. And he said, so, um, you know, uh, is, there, is there not a reward uh, coming here? Suddenly the door opens and uh, 72 men walk out and start punching him all over the place. And the brother comes back and he says, well, where's the, where's the promise of these 72 virgins that I was told about? And he said, no, that's a typo in the Quran. It's 72 Virginians, the guys who signed the Quran. <laughs> Yeah. You need to be you need to be on Johnny Carson. We need to get you the Stuyan show live and direct from Canada. Wow. <laughs> get some spiritual stand-up going. <laughs> I give you leave my daughter. Take us home, brother. Sure. Well, I, if we go by the time, my time is up. But no, we're 945 today, sir. On 945. All right. Yes, sir. Um, this, this, um, work that we're studying is like 
Paul, like John on the Isle of Patmos. He's making everything so beautiful. He walked the streets of gold and so forth and so on. I don't know what that will be like in the spiritual world. Um, but I know that this time, since the, since the fall itself, we have been walking the path of restoration and trying to restore everything back to what it should have been. It didn't even get a chance to be that point. Adam and Eve never really had holy sex, not even the first time. Mm. So that, that, is, that, is, that, is not, that has not been able to be reconciled only through the time that we are in. So what Jesus, what Jesus brought about was a new level of, of, of restore, restorative re religion. Um, and when they, when they killed him, it fell all the way back to, to um, uh, restoration again. Jesus came as the savior to remove all of the restoration of trying to get, you know, sacrifices and so forth and so on, to actually move from the sacrifice to the actual relationship, true relationship with God, that diamond shaped God, man and woman and children. And when they killed him, he could not be the model for that. And so then we never saw that. Um, the fundamental problem with Noor and his three sons, uh, and I want to make it clear that it was not just Ham, it was all three of them was responsible. They all three walked in backwards mm -hmm. and covered their father. What did they cover? They covered his reproduction organs. It, it, you know, it doesn't, it, it, why was that? It was because actually Noah had restored everything. That, that time, you know, 100 years and the 40 days and all that, and all that work had restored everything. And he was laying on the altar, completely exposed his reproduction organs. His sexual organ was completely being offered up to God. For the very first time in history, it had been purified. There was no talk of circumcision during then. The sacrifice had been made. And the children were so religious, more than connected to their father and his sacrifice, they were being very religious because the first religion was, in fact, when God created clothes to cover the nakedness of Adam and Eve. As you pointed out, several of you, there was no need to have clothes uh, before sin. And perhaps, and perhaps, you know, what, what was the point, right? Uh, and so when they close, when they, when they, when they decide, and God, and God covered the nakedness because he couldn't see it. It was no longer holy. It was no longer a place that God could dwell. And, and Noah had restored that and removed all of that. So God could be praised again. So in reality, our sexual organs is the most holy part of all human, humanity. It is the only place that God can be reproduced. Not through spit or sweat 
uh, only only through uh, through through the reproduction organ. And so, once that is defiled and gone, believe it or not, it took all of that time from the time of Abraham all the way to Jesus to restore that moment. And uh, and 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 in the end, it couldn't be done. So the Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord, came to save us so that we could have that level of relationship with God in in what we would call um, uh, divine intercourseal relationship. Uh, and Father said absolute sex. What he was talking about, of course, things get lost in translation. When you when you hear the divine, when you hear the Lord's prayer, uh, given given before the Greeks got a hold of it, it's it, it's it's you cannot imagine how beautiful it is and how responsible it is for each one taking responsibility for their prayer. Same thing as Father is saying now. That's why we say our Jew. And in other words, I take responsibility. The Lord's Prayer is completely different. I mean, there's something there, but it's nothing like what Jesus said, quite frankly. I heard it for the first time uh, today in the original language. It's more beautiful than what we say. Um, so, so, so he's absolute sex. Absolute sex meant the sun is having an re intercourseal relationship with the moon. The rain is having an intercourse relationship with earth. The earth is having an intercourse relationship. A tree is with a seed goes down in the ground and comes up a tree. It's all in that intercourse relationship. It has nothing to do with having sex with a man and a woman. So far with absolute sex and we think, ah, yeah, I had good sex last night. It had nothing to do with that. He's talking about something far greater and mass than a man and a woman. And so when we when we when we we miss when we misunderstand things come become very very you know basic and earthy and based on limited understanding. So when we get the blessing has come to us, and and maybe this may be some news to some people listening. When you are a blessed couple, the husband or the, the spouse is the one that's supposed to wash the body when the husband or when the spouse, other spouse dies. The undertaker can prepare you, but the spouse has to go in and wash the body. And the most important part that they wash is your sexual organ. Why? Because that is the holy of holies. Right? And, and I've been with some, especially some women, sisters, that have to go in and, and, and um, watch their husband, and, they, and they're just scared to death. And I say, you act like you never made love with your husband before. No, no, but he wasn't dead. Well, what's that got to do with it? I mean, the body is the body, right? And his organ is probably more stiff now as ever been. Because he's dead, right? Anyway, I had to assist one particular sister because she was just couldn't do it, right? So I was in the room there and um, and we unclose we unclose the body, and um, and we had and you have to have the holy handkerchief to do this. That's why your holy handkerchief had to be with you as your first intercourse relationship for the three day ceremony, and it has to be packaged up again, and it will be washed used to wash your body after you pass. And Father said this. He said. 
the reason why the woman has to hold the human, the brother's sexual organ and pray, because that is the connection to God. You never heard that before, I'm sure. This is why the sin was so great with Ham's children. It had nothing at all. He created sin. no. It was it was it was really there. It was it was the greatest moment in God's life and God's history. But that man offered his whole body and his laying on the altar <clears throat> as a living sacrifice that restored the greatest thing that Satan took away was the ability to create another God. And he restored that. Love has no boundaries. It is an amazing thing. And we have reduced it down to having a sexual relationship, quite frankly, which has nothing to do with that. Love is, love is life-giving and life-taking. And um, even ants have sex, everything have sex. So you're not talking about that. But because, because we are separated from God, we're separated from God, then we cannot understand the value of sex. It just become an earthly pleasure or physical pleasure. Um, and it's abusive and it's using the one for the other and, and it's not, not at, all, at all holy. That's why we turn our lights out and cry and hide and so forth and so on, because it's not holy. It was meant to be a holy, most holy act, more than going to church, more than speaking in tongues, more than baptizing, more than anything you can imagine. It was the moment that God enters into the body of the man and the woman at the same time. It is the moment that God then be, does the magic of shooting that sperm out to connect with the, earth, the egg. And in that magical moment creates a human being. That is in the image and likeness of God. That is the most beautiful moment in, in all of human history. And it happens again and again and again. And God cannot enjoy it, cannot be a part of it. How sad is that? That's why the blessing is so important. That's the meaning of the three-day ceremony. It's laying your body on the altar and offering up your sexual relationship to God first. One, two, three, three days. And it is such a trinity that's being taken place. Not until now did anybody understand that. No matter how holy you are, or how sanctified you are, if this blessing is not connected the three-day ceremony is not fulfilled. You have to get it done some other way. I don't know what the other way it is, but it, it, I'm sure God will figure out a way after a while because a little, more people in the spirit world who never had it than those who they have. Right? So God will work it out of the way. I'll let it go right there. I'm gone four minutes, five minutes over. I'm sorry, my Lord. <laughs> no, my Lord, don't be sorry. No, don't be sorry when you're having divine intercourse. Let's, let's put in some more in that beautiful narration. Um, I wish we, we do have time, but um, that will be for next week. You know, very beautiful um, unfolding, divine intercourse is happening around us. And we pray that we be aware of it. And thank you, Dr. Levi, so much, so much came out of that. Um, your share. You know, one insight, all of us can share uh, at least one minute, uh, uh, any insights that touched our hearts from all that we've heard. And I just want to zero in on what you shared about Lot and about um, Noah, how truly, um, you know, that, that same syndrome that his children um, seeing their father naked, um, we still, in a way, even the best of us, um, we still, Unfortunately, we carry that. 
And it is so amazing when you see children, Dr. Erin. Um, I know when I was young, we played in the rain naked. We were, I don't know how, when I started wearing pants, I can't remember if I'm serious. You know, and we didn't think adults, you know, our sisters, our cousins, or they had, you know, I can remember seeing their, their breasts, they had people, but, and it was just a beautiful to, that's why the Bible again guides us in this divine intercourse to go back to be childlike. Unless you become like a child, you cannot even see, imagine what the kingdom of God. So we thank God for Father Moon um, really challenging the envelope of religiosity um, to let us know the sacredness of, of our sexual organs. Let us go to Dr. Stuya, and then we'll go to Minister Kelly, and then we'll um, end with uh, Dr. Erin. And any last words from Levi? Dr. Stuya, please give us your one minute. Unmute yourself, sir. Here we go. Thank you. So, Dorothy, <clears throat> I just want to say one um, <clears throat> slip of the tongue that was made here as you spoke about uh, <clears throat> uh, death, you said, once you die and go to spirit world, I would, you know, what I say is, once you're born into the spirit world, then your body dies, much like the placenta that separates from the baby. The placenta kept the fetus uh, alive. So once the baby is born, the placenta is finished. So once the spirit is born into the spirit world, the body is finished. So it's, we don't die. That's the point. <laughs> we are made to be eternal beings. We don't die. Uh, the placenta dies, the body dies, but we do not die. <clears throat> and um, that, you know, that, I just wanted to make that uh, quick uh, comment. <clears throat> and also to mention that in the past, you can see Michelangelo and all these other people uh, in the paintings, they extol the virtue of the man's body. The women's bodies were not considered interesting. The women's bodies were taken, look at the ancient art. You see these great hockey men, you know, with muscles and this, that, and atlas, and the women are just seen garbed. And they are seen more as a, as a necessity for procreation. They're not really seen as objects of beauty. And of course, even the Bible describes women as a helpmate rather than the other half of God. So with that level of understanding, with that level of appreciation, you could not bring the two halves together because the two halves were incomplete. So the two halves were like this, but one half was that much and the other half, maybe that much. When you bring them together, it's still less than a half. <laughs> so. The question is, can you and I bring the fullness of the intended love that God has in mind so that we can do that <clears throat> uh, successfully in this life? Anyway, more to say, but I don't want to take any more time. Thank you. So Thank, much. you. Thank you, Dr. Stardin. Thank you. I know there's so much we will come back to. We'll come back next Friday, says Minister Kelly. Minister Kelly, unmute yourself and share your one minute, anything on your heart that you've received today through this great, great family conversation about divine intercourse, absolute sex, getting to know God intimately. You're muted, mom, mom, sister. Unmute, it's your turn, unmute, please. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we need to um, make sure that when it comes down to having sex, we need to make sure that we are married. And I'm very skeptical on that right now. I'm very pushing there. You need to be married to the mate that you have sex with because God made sex that way between a man and a woman to, for that man to leave his father and mother and come to his wife. And when that happens, that makes them warm. And also, when they have sex, they enjoy it because the Holy Spirit comes in when they're doing it right. 
getting everything in line the way God wanted it to be. So that's mm -hmm. what that intimacy with God is a lot of that is. But anyway, make a long story short, that um, married couples, whatever the two agree upon, because I've been reading some things where it's been debated on sex. But if that couple agree on other ways of doing sex, except the, you know, the normal way, it's up to them. And I don't think anything wrong with it. Mm. But like Reverend Dorda always said, whatever you do, please take out time and be intimate with God. Amen. 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 I'm done. Dr. Erin, take out time and be intimate with God. I know you always do. Share with us, Daddy. One moment of sex out of the will of God caused all of this chaos yes. held that we're living in today. I just want to say this. Thank you. But listen at this. Reverend Doherty gave me the uh, the live for the next two weeks. And uh, I will be teaching next week. And where, where will you be, the host? Will? No, we, I'm sorry. Let me just, uh, Will just text me. He had to go on an errand, so he's oh. not here. Yeah, he had to leave. Sorry about that. Yes. Listen, would it be all right for Minister Kelly to be the host? <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> all right. All right. So you think I put a lot of work purple on it, but I'm so glad I hear what Reverend Daughter said. Thank God for that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Amen, Dr. Erin. We're looking forward to next week. Let's close out. Uh, we've spent, I pray we've spent a good time this Wednesday together looking to the weekend. Dr. Levi Doherty, maybe you want to close us out, sir. Um, mindful what's going on in Korea. Um, continue to send vibrations. That's part of divine intercourse. When you send your thoughts, your hearts of goodness, um, wherever in the world, um, that is, that is um, divine exchange going on. So we pray for success wherever people are meeting for world peace uh, and, and, and the goodness of humankind. So we pray for True Mothers Summit to be successful. And we look forward, Dr. Stuyan, your Friday, are you still hosting Friday? Stuyan? Yes, every Friday, please. Every yeah, Friday, yeah, yeah. Please. Mm -hmm. everyone here is welcome. Send the invite. <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. Anybody else, any announcement? All right. Um, Dr. Erin, Dr. Stu um, Dr. Levi, one of you close us out, please, sirs. You're muted, Dr. Levi. In the beginning, our heavenly parent, our God, you created everything. All that is came from you. Yes, it has been defiled and misused and abused in so many ways. But because you gave it away, there's nothing mm -hmm. you could do about that. We are just a few here. And we are intending to change things as much as we possibly can the love and the joy and the truth that you've given us. We now have hope and we have a vision what we can do for the world and for you. The world is so vast yet so small. So many things are happening around the clock. Things are always being done good 24 seven and always being bad 24 seven. Mm. We have to divide rightly to know what is right and what is wrong. Mm. Based on our consciousness and understanding that we're closer to you, and the more we understand the principle, the more we understand love. For we are your children. Yes, Lord. We're working desperately to become one with you as much as possible. I'm constantly reminded of the words that our Lord Jesus said. He said, to love God with all your mind all your heart, and all your soul. Yes, yes. Dear God, we want to do that. Now, it's a full-time effort, of course, because 
was surrounded with fallen nature. And it's part of our DNA. Has come from our parents down through the years, and we're all related to Adam and Eve. Yes, Lord. And we pray, dear God, that every day we remove ourselves more and more closer to you and far and far away from sin and Satan and ill thoughts, ill wills, ill desires. Thank you for these moments. For they have yeah. and helped us so much, Lee, that we gain so much from it. It, it's, it's a good thing. We thank you and we humbly thank you. Thank you. offer this prayer to you in our names and we take responsibility. This yes. we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless Amen. you all. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you. <laughs> I do. Namaste. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you on Monday, Sister Kelly. You'll be leading us. And yeah, oh my God. God bless you all. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Stuyan, I will see you 7:30 Friday on Friday. Look forward to that. By the way, Kelly, please come and join us Friday night if you can, 7:30 to 8:30. Okay. Sure will. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. God bless. Bye bye. Thank you. God bless you. Bye bye. Bye -bye. Be a wonderful host. Father Bayou, you'll be great. Thank you. Thank God. Thank Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs>